Hi, Ray here. I'm glad you could join me. Welcome to my creative cramp. Seriously, do you ever run out of ideas and creative juice? I'm not so sure I run out of ideas, but sometimes I just don't seem to be able to jumpstart them, turn them into something tangible. So, what to do when the muse refuses to cooperate when she spurns your advances? Or for the 0.8% of my audience that identify as female, then again, well, whatever gender or non-gender muse you invoke, what do you do when they go AWOL? Back at the height of my commercial career that uh, happened to coincide with my youth, endless ardor and energy, I had to turn up every morning with a bag full of tricks. And I don't mean camera gear. Even if the project came with a Mylar page layout and Pantone color swatches, I, um, or, or rather the team, had to translate that, and often the art director's vague and impractical vision, into an irresistible image of desire for lingerie or, <laughs> or kitchen appliances. No one ever suggested we wait around for the muse. Though I can, I can recall a few stalling techniques that we had up our sleeves, but when the model, makeup artist and stylist were booked for 7 a.m., hangover or not, it was showtime. I was bemoaning writer's block on my blog a decade or so ago. I'd heard some Canadian author claiming he never edited or rewrote his prose that it spilled fully formed onto the page, ready to read. I don't know if I was incredulous or envious, <laughs> but for sure I didn't and still don't possess such talent. Writing for me is a kind of triage for thoughts that would otherwise founder under the avalanche of random data that cascades through my head. <laughs> Sometimes there's a, a kernel of sense or nascent wisdom mixed with otherwise vague, unformed ideas, feelings, and unrelated detritus. The nuggets need to be dug from the deluge. <laughs> I reprise that regret five years later on, on another blog, but with a bulleted list of suggestions for carrying on when no amount of begging will work. Aside from uh, getting the hell off social media, I encouraged readers to, quote, sit down and get to work, or pick up your camera, do it, now, <laughs> even if uninspired, get something started. It might be a sentence or two, an outline of a planned blog post or preliminary sketch of a photographic project. And that's in fact what I did to kickstart this video. Yesterday afternoon, too late to really make any headway as far as packing for a, a shoot heading out on location. But I jotted some notes, uh, grabbing the ideas before they evaporated into the mist, along with a glimpse of diaphanous gown. Back to my blog post of March 8, 2017. As is often the case, here and uh, on my blogs, the best content is contributed by my audience. There, one of my readers, the photographer Rob Campbell, contributed this wisdom and Listen carefully, I'll, I'll read the comment in full. Frankly, I believe the muse is a fake. She pretends to live in the soul, but doesn't. She lives in the mood. And that's where you've got her. You can make mood. Insofar as photography goes, you simply need to consider the situation of the pro. He can't afford to await the call and has to come up with the right solutions every time and he usually does, to the best of his ability so to do. That ability, measured over time, marks him as either good or not good at his job. Remove the financial imperative and, as they say, what do you got? No pressure. That matters. Just option to laze or not to laze, as Shakespeare might have said. Awaiting the muse as amateur is nothing more and nothing less than the reality of can't be bothered making itself felt, if not heard. Because 
In the grander scheme of things, it just makes no damn difference if one gets that snap or not, scribbles that paragraph with or without indignation, or just yawns and makes a cup of java. To make a difference, it has to matter. If it doesn't matter, why expend the energy? On the other hand, there is the question of therapy, in which case it does matter. For those of us with fractured lives, photography can certainly provide moments of freedom from thought, periods where conscious thought can be suspended and the demons driven behind a temporary wall. In such cases, or at least in the hunt for relief if only from self, I'd recommend going out into the street looking at the things around one and taking note of the common absurdities and juxtapositions that can excite the eye. They are everywhere, and half an hour spent on one's feet can easily result in half a week at the computer, which, of course, gives rise to yet another set of situations one might prefer to avoid. Nobody said life was perfect. Mention is often made of planning, of starting everything off with a plan, a preconception. To me, that's part of the problem. There are already too many plans, both of our own and of others on our behalf. Get out of the grip of plans. Use the freedom from them as you take that stroll down the street. Open your heart and mind and be random. Life happens even if nothing's happening in a town near you because you can't see it. Just don't sit at home waiting for bulbs to illuminate. They only do that in cheap internet adverts. <laughs> there you go. And if anyone should know a thing or two about the mercurial muse, it's Rob, who photographed so many, including Bridget Bardot. So I won't muddy Rob's plain and straightforward wisdom with further editorial. Back to work. Greek mythology tells us the muse, or muses because they, number nine, were born at the foot of Mount Olympus, Melpomene, Arado, and Polyhymnia, Urania, and Calliope, Cleo, Euterpe, Terpsichore, Antalya. No wonder Homer and Hesiod, who insisted on their number, were so well endowed. Uh, with rhyme, I mean. <laughs> Covid prevents me from revisiting Hurricane Ridge over on the Olympic Peninsula, where I've previously photographed Washington's abode of gods and goddesses. But I do have a commanding view of those heights right here from this very balcony. So. What excuse can I have for lack of inspiration other than being lazy? Finally, I might just ask, what's your passion? What or who do you love? Don't let that muse escape. Until next time, take care of yourselves, cheers, and we'll see you on the next shoot.